G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is some combinations and permutations worded questions. This is part of a series of videos where we've been having a look at combinations and permutations. Uh, that is the number of different ways, say, that we could select a uh, number of items from a larger group, or even the number of different ways that we could arrange things. So, in this video I'm going to chuck six different combinations and permutations questions at you. I'm not going to get right into uh, necessarily going through each rule and that sort of deal. I've done that in previous videos. I'm just going to attack each question how I would attack it and we'll go with that, okay? Um, anyway, six different questions, see how you go. So question one. A person has seven songs to choose from and will perform three. How many different ways can they do this? So for any of these questions, the very first thing you would uh, do is really identify it as a combinations question or a permutations question. Once again, with combinations, order doesn't matter. Uh, it's say like selecting three things from a bigger group, but you don't really care what order they come out in. But with permutations, order does matter. And with this particular question, it is a permutations question. Order matters. There is a very definite first song, there is a very definite second song, and there is a very definite third song. So the way I'd approach this particular question is as follows. I would put three different spaces for the three different songs that are going to be sung. And then I'd go, okay, for the first one, for the first particular song, how many choices does this person have? They have seven songs they can choose from. And then for the second song, well, they've already sung one of the songs in this space here, so now they've only got six spaces to choose from, six songs to choose from. And for the third song, well, they've already sung two songs now from the seven, so now they only have five songs to choose from. And what we then did, or what we then do, is we multiply these through, cause, and it will work out the number of different permutations there are. Seven times six times five is 210 different ways of selecting these songs. Okay, you might have used the rule for that, and hopefully you would have got the uh, same answer for that. Okay, but that's the way I attack these. We'll go to the second question. Question two. A horse race has 12 horses. How many different ways can first, second, third occur? Okay, uh, now once again, you're going to look at this and say, well, is this, in this question, does order matter? And I would say it very definitely does, because I've actually quite specifically stated we've actually, we want a first, a second, and a third. Okay, so... How would you do this? You give it a fly. You see, you give it a go. Okay, you'd select, you've got the three different spaces, the first, the second, and the third. And for the first one, you have 12 possibilities, 12 possibilities of which horse might come first. But once that horse has come first, then you're left with 11 different possibilities for second. And then for third, then, you're only left with 10 different possibilities. Okay, so what would you do then? You would multiply this through. 12 times 11 times 10, so uh, 12 11 is 132 times 10, the answer is going to be 1,320 different ways of doing this. But I'm just going to take this a little bit of a further step. What if order didn't matter? What if we were just saying, how many different ways, you know, could we say the first three, what the first three horses will be, without actually really caring whether they're first, second, or third? Well, we take this a little step further. It would become a combinations question then. And then what would happen is we would say, well, okay, there's one, two, three different places here. And that means there is three factorial ways of arranging these places. And so we divide these out. And that's all we do with combinations is we divide it by the number of places here, factorialized. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 6. So we're going to end up with 1320 over 6, which is going to be equal to 220 different ways. And that's if order doesn't matter. Okay? And that's the extra step we take if we're doing combinations questions. This is if you were just working at the permutations and order did matter. This is if you were working at the number of different combinations and order didn't matter. So we'll go to a different question now. Question three. How many different ways can five cards be dealt from a deck of 52 cards? Okay. Now with this particular question, does order matter? No, it doesn't. Because, you know, the, the card that got dealt first could be dealt fourth. So this is a combinations question. So we're going to treat it like we did that last part of that, that question we did just before. I'm going to get the five spaces, the one, two, 
three, four, five for the five cards, but then I'm going to divide it by the number of different ways that these five cards can be arranged. This is the same as five factorial. Five times four times three times two times one. So for the very first upper top here, how many different ways can 52 cards these be picked out? Well, the first one we have 52 cards to choose from. The second one we have 51 cards to choose from. The third card selection now we have 50 cards to choose from. The next card now we have 49 cards to choose from. And the next card now, because we've already chosen these ones, we have 48 cards. And then we'd multiply these through. And you can imagine you're going to get a pretty big number when you do this. The number of different possibilities is 2,000,000. 598,960. Okay. Okay, to question four. How many different ways can the letters in the word Mississippi be arranged? Now, this straight away you're going to look at and say, is this a combinations or a permutations question? And you'll probably think order does matter in this. Order definitely matters. It's all about actually arranging things in a particular order. So it's a permutations question. But it, it's a bit of a special question because it's not just a matter of arranging 11 different letters, which there are in the word Mississippi, because we have these repeats. Uh, if you were to change the position of these P's, they're not going to change the actual word. So we've got to take into account these particular uh, repeats. So the way that we do this is as follows. First off, the number of different ways that these letters Mississippi could be arranged is 11 factorial. Okay, so 11 factorial, which is, means this. 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But to take into account the repeats, we just count the number of repeats for the different letters. So for the letter P, there is two of them. For the letter S, there is four of these. And for the letter I, there is four of these. And we divide these out as follows. So we're going to divide by 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial. So we get something that looked like this. And now what we could do is we could start cancelling things out. This 4, 3, 2, 1, and this 4, 3, 2, 1. And you might say, okay, this 3 and 2 here is equal to 6. And we have a 4 and a 2, which is equal to 8. So we're left with 11 times 10 times 9 times 7 times 5. This is equal to 34,650 different ways. And that's the way you do these types of questions, okay? You just divide by the repeats factorialized. Question five. How many ways can four fruits be selected from six for a salad? Nice, easy question. Does order matter? Hey, no, it doesn't. This is a combinations question. This is a really, really nice, easy question, this one. So I'm going to draw the four spaces for our fruits. One, two, three, four. And so for the first fruit, we have six to choose from. And now we've already chosen that particular fruit. Now we have five for the second one we're going to select. And then for the third fruit we're going to select, we've already selected two out of the six, so we're left with four. And for the next one, we're left with three. And we're going to multiply these through, but like with all combinations, we have to divide, because we're going to have to take into account the, uh, with the order doesn't matter. We're going to divide by the number of different ways these four objects can be arranged also to get rid of those particular arrangements. Four. 3, 2, 1, multiplied. And that's what we're left with. So, we can cancel out once again. This 4 is going to cancel this 4 out. 6 is going to be cancelled out by the 3 and the 2. 3 times 2 is 6. And we're left with 5 times 3, which is equal to 15 different ways. So for the 6th question, how many different ways can 6 people sit around a campfire? Does order matter in this question? You might look at it and say, hey, it definitely does. It definitely does. So this is a permutations question. Okay, uh, but it's a special type of permutations question because if I was to draw this campfire, and I'll draw the six people sitting around it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to realize that these people are sitting in a circle. And so for this particular question, or these particular questions, I'm going to consider that if everybody was to get up and move counterclockwise this way, and I'll, I'll look at one person in particular, but you got to assume that everybody's following his lead, so this person will go to where he is, and this person will go to where he is, and this person will go to where he is. You're going to notice that 
we're going to assume that these are actually moving to a similar sort of arrangement, okay? So if this person was to move this way, we'd have one similar arrangement. Or if they were to move to this way, we could have another similar arrangement. Or if they were all to get up and now move counterclockwise this way, that'd still all be relative the same way. Or if they were to move this way, we'd have a similar arrangement again. Or if they were to get up and move counterclockwise once again, they'd have a similar arrangement back to the same position. We have one, two, three, four, five, six similar arrangements that we have to take into account. So we're going to divide out by those. Okay, so we're going to divide our answer by six. So six different people, if they were in a line, could sit together six times five times four times three times two times one different ways, but these are going to cancel each other out, so we're just left with 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 120 different ways. If you were struggling with these, uh, I recommend you go have a look at a couple of the combinations and permutations videos where I explain the rules in greater detail, or the, the methods we just used there in greater detail. This was just a few practice questions, uh, just mixing them up a little bit. Anyway, um, I hope that video was of some help to you. We'll see you next time. Bye.